as the decipherment entered the 1980s, fewer than 30 syllabic signs could be read with confidence. There was still a missing key that held back the flood. That final key was uncovered by David Stewart, whose informal education as a Mayanist began at a very early age. His father, George, worked for the National Geographic Society and often brought him along on his work trips to Mesoamerica. When David was eight years old, George Stewart took his family to Coba in the Yucatan. It was around these gorgeous lakes, big pyramids covered by forest. But I, I distinctly remember for the first uh, two or three weeks just hating it. It was hot, there were a lot of bugs. You know, we were all kind of crammed into this Maya hut. But I found myself, you know, looking at the ruins and kind of wandering around. It was just kind of an incredible place to wander around as a kid. What really got me, though, was while we were at Koba, there were a couple of monuments that were actually discovered. My dad would drop everything and work on drawing the monument. And I would just sort of look over his shoulder while he was doing that and thought, gee, you know, this is, this is pretty amazing. He decided he would go out and uh, draw some himself. So he'd take his crayons and paper and everything and go out, pencils, and, and started drawing hieroglyphs. By the time we got back to the States, my inner soul had been so affected by that experience that I just wanted to keep going back. Two years later, in Washington, D.C., David met Linda Sheely in the offices of National Geographic. He was 10 years old. I remember kind of sitting there quietly in the office while she was talking to several people who were kind of gathered around her. And so she was drawing a glyph, and I, I, I don't know why I blurted this out, because, you know, I, I wasn't a very outgoing kid, I think, but I, I said, oh, that's a fire glyph. And, and Linda kind of paused, and... I remember she sort of looked behind her shoulder and over at me and said, yeah, you're right, kid, that's a fire glyph. And I think it was the same night, we all went out to a restaurant on 16th Street in Washington. George said that they would really appreciate it if there was ever a chance that David could study with me or something. And so on the spur of the moment, I said, well, why don't, why didn't he come down to Palenque this summer? In the next summer was one of the most amazing times of my life. She allowed me to help her check her drawings. You know, we were in the temples with flashlights, with her drawings on clipboards, making corrections. I remember Linda was saying, "Okay, kid, you know, if you want to learn Maya glyphs, you gotta, you gotta do it on your own. You know, I'll help you." But, you know, she wasn't just showing me what things were. I mean, I had to go in and kind of work it out myself. I gave him the tablet of the cross told him to go out on the back porch and figure out as much as he could about it. He came back a couple of days later and, and had his, the same amount of structural understanding of the text that it had taken me and Peter and Floyd and Dave Kelly three years to do. And so I figured then that he was, he was really quite good. 